up, guys? It is your girl, Danye and Walls, and we are back with another episode of Ask 15 Questions 2. And ladies, he is here, okay? Let me just make, let me make this disclaimer. When I posted that I was going to have this gentleman on an episode, you all came with the questions, and I appreciate that, because normally it'd be a struggle, but y'all was asking all of the questions. So we are here uh, with Mr. Garfield and this, or do you prefer Sleepy Nurse? There we go. Uh, we're here with Sleepy Nurse and this episode. Okay. All right. Well, we're going to call you both simultaneously. Yeah. And this episode is Ask 15 Questions to a Mel R. N. Thank you so much for offering and accepting my invitation to be on this episode. How are you doing? Uh, thank you for having me. I feel good. Uh, it's Saturday. feel great. And um, I'm happy to be here. Yes. Thank you so much. Um, and we're going to jump right in. We don't need to waste time. I have an amazing bonus. Um, my viewers may know what it is, um, but you don't know. So that is always interesting <laughs> because I like to do bonuses at the end of every episode. But we're going to start right in. Question number one. Tell us about yourself. Oh, wow. Um, so <laughs> my name is Garfield. Uh, I go by Sleepy Nurse on Instagram. I've been a nurse for about seven years. I do have a girlfriend. <laughs> Throwing that out there first. Disclaimer first. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm see this. And um, right now I'm transitioning into going into the health perspective, the preventative perspective, and uh, trying to intertwine that with, you know, acute care. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. That is great. That is great. And we're going to go more into that field. Thank you for that disclaimer. Uh, <laughs> because as I told him before we started recording, uh, the ladies were asking 15 questions, but it wasn't the ones I wanted. Um, so <laughs> he let you all know he has a girlfriend. Okay. And we respect that here on this channel. <laughs> Thank you for saying that and opening with that amazing um, starter, okay? That's they may stop watching the episode, but <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Gain information, okay? All right. <laughs> it's all about information. That's all it's about, okay? Somebody was trying to come up in 2021, trying to make a future for themselves. I was just like, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> he told y'all there it is out in the open from the very beginning all right <laughs> honest all right. and open honest and open so you already told us you kind of answered one and two <laughs> um, <laughs> but which is fine we love that we love when the, the questions intertwine with each other because number two was how long have you been an RN um so is seven years this is it the same answer or did you like yeah, I've been a nurse since I, I started working in 2014, January, actually. So Okay. Seven years, yeah, seven years, right? Yeah. Yeah. And that was as an RN, because as we learned in another episode of a young lady we interviewed who was an LPN, um, that sometimes, you know, nurses, they progress through, but you started off as an RN. I started off as an RN, and then I got my uh, bachelor's in 2017. Hmm. Okay, so seven years. All right, so... Question number three. This is the question I love asking all professionals um, because I want you to go down memory lane. These are the moments that you get to reflect. Yeah. Um, how long were you in school before becoming an RN? I was in school for only um, two years. I went, I went from my associate's degree and I went straight in. Really? So yeah, that's a little odd. Uh, it was very stressful because um, I didn't even have all my prerequisites for school. I told them I could do both at the same time, and they took a gamble on me. So I've, yeah, what? yeah, I've been a nurse since I was um twenty one years old. 21? 20, 20, yeah, twenty two. So you got an associate, and you went and so there were no like certifications or anything that you had to get. Nothing like that. I went straight in from my associates, took the prerequisites like uh, anatomy, microbiology. I think I did like sociology, psychology, which I already mm -hmm. have in my associates. And then went straight into my uh, RN degree. Wow. 
Yeah. And, but you were working while doing, because you did mention that you got your BA later on. So, but you were working while doing your BA. Yeah, I was a, a nurse's aide. I really started from the bottom. I was a nurse's aide. Okay. While in nursing school. And then I, when I became a nurse, then I went to, uh, I went to my bachelor's and was still an RN. Wow. That is like the total opposite of what I was expecting. I was ex- <laughs> literally, I was expecting here like, yeah, I did four years and then I had to do this cert and then I had to do this thing and then I did clinicals and then I did a thing. You didn't do a thing. I didn't do you anything. Did- I just went, I did the textbook. I went straight <laughs> in. I went straight in. Oh my gosh. So like, is that a, I'm, I know I keep saying a thing, but is that a thing? Like, can you, other people do that or you're just like you can um you can get your pre you don't you can you can get do your prerequisites in one year mm-hmm. and then go straight into an RN degree if you get accepted. Wow. You could be a nurse by like 20 years old, 20, 21 years old. Whoa, wasn't expecting that. I really wasn't. Yeah. I was <laughs> I was expecting this long story of like Hard work and dedication. Not saying that you didn't work hard. It was hard work and it was dedication. <laughs> it was just a short amount of hard work. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I put it together. I, I, I did my like micro and um, anatomy, one of the like anatomy two while in nursing school. So I was taking about like 17 credits at one point. Sheesh. I know there are nurses that are going to watch this and be like, he is crazy. Yeah, I guess I should. Ex- yeah, I guess I should ex- explain that. Thank you for asking that. Because yeah, <laughs> I don't know that. You just need prerequisites. Oh, I don't think people know that. I didn't know that. Yeah. I was expecting. I told you like the story of like, hey, I went four years and I applied for the nursing program and got rejected. And then, <laughs> you know, that's I, that's I normally some people. NCLEX. Huh? I did fill my NCLEX at first. Oh, okay. Which is tell. So I don't know. So the NCLEX is what you do to get um, your license. Oh, okay. After you finish nursing school, you have to take the board exam. Oh, okay. Which is, I guess every profession has that. Teachers have that. Like, mm-hmm. okay. Okay. How many, you only failed it one time. I failed it once. Yeah, I didn't study for it. I was trying to wing it. Because that's how I've been doing. I've been winging things. <laughs> and then that's where there was a stop. <laughs> That was the moment where it was like, okay, no more winging. You yeah, have no to winging. actually study. Studying right. is good. Moral of the story is don't <laughs> wing it like Garville. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. Don't so do impressed. Don't do it. Don't wing it. That's probably, and we're going to get into the name sleeping nurse, but that now it makes oh, sense. Wow. Now it makes sense. That makes sense. Don't tell us now. <laughs> don't tell us now. I had an epiphany. I think you like changed my life. Is this why I'm so, oh my God. And there we are. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. That is probably why you know, it had <laughs> oh, happened. I didn't even realize that. <laughs> Whoa. Give him my credit. I didn't even give him the name, but I gave him the meaning. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> so now after your at, just put Don Gay Revealed. <laughs> oh, so man. Funny. Wow. Yes. Mm-hmm. He, wo- he won all the things. <laughs> he did it. And now he's sleepy nurse. So, <laughs> more of the story. If you don't want to be a sleepy nurse, don't wing it. Okay? Don't there wing it. Don't wing it. Okay. Uh, <laughs> question number four. Um, is this the career path you always wanted? Did you always want to be an RN? Uh, yes and no. I, I didn't want to go into the healthcare field. Okay. Uh, I want to be a nurse practitioner first. I want to go straight through like what we were talking about before. Mm-hmm. But I decided to do the RN because financially it's hard to just go straight to school and then go to another school. So this yeah. is what I wanted to do. Okay. So just, it's, you still have that momentum of the buildup, um, as you told me earlier, because he is still in school, ladies and gentlemen, to this moment. Um, yes. So you're still kind of doing it, but not the buildup like we like we heard in the previous episode. Yeah, but, I've, I've been slowing it down, trying to learn more about myself, learn more about health. And mm-hmm. that's why I'm taking my time now. Now, 
the younger you didn't, the older no. you does. <laughs> yes. Full circle on the fourth oh. question. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Look, we're done. And we're done. That's the end segment. <laughs> We've come, we've gotten what we've come for. That is it. Okay, no. Uh, all right. So how does oh question number five? How does your family and friends feel about you being in this field? Uh, I think they feel it, it's it feels like me. It's very natural. They know mm-hmm. I'm about health, they know I'm about um like the basics of anything, like trying to make sure we know what we're doing. And I'm always helping, always caring. So they think they're very happy and very supportive. Mm, that's good. So do they always call you for every medical thing? No. They don't? No. My bro- my younger brother is a physician assistant. Okay. My uncle's a doctor, so. They don't need you. <laughs> yeah. Even though they do, though. It's different, though. Because even like LPNs and nurses, I feel like we have a different view of health. Yeah. Yeah. And that's totally different from the young lady who was an LPN because she said her family calls her for everything. Yeah, it's I I like an LPN's perspective because they're really at bedside. So they might have that gut feeling is way closer than from a doctor in my perspective. So you're not bedside. Like what do you I'm do? Not anymore. Oh oh anymore. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I I I left bedside three years ago. I might go back though. <laughs> Did you but, like it though? Yes and no. <laughs> yes and no. Yes and no. It's I, okay. 12, 13 hours is very dreadful. It that's a lot of uh, stress on the body. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, they say it's continuity of care, and they only want two nurses. I think LPN sometimes they work eight hour shifts, which I think is healthier. Uh, other than that, the I liked it, but I don't think anyone should be working like 13, 14 hours four or five days a week. That's not good for your body. No, no, that's not even proper math. And I teach math. I mean, it adds up, but it's it don't add up. a lot. <laughs> yeah, that don't, add, that don't add up. But you know, you're talking about health and then you're working 14, 15 hours. Like yeah, that. yeah. That, that's like jumbo shrimp, like very oxymoronic. Very, exactly. very, very much so. Woo, um, I, I couldn't do it. I'm just going to be honest. I always tell the story. I wanted to be in the medical field. I started off bio pre-med major. Just knew it. I just knew I was going to be all the things. Then I saw the math required and I was like, ah, I don't oh, want yeah. it. <laughs> it's like, like pre-calc and like, yeah, it gets. I was like, calculus. yeah. After like pre-calc and statistics, then you start getting into math. I'm like, they made this up. They yeah, did. I don't know how that is applicable <laughs> after a while. I was like, I don't even know what to do. What are you, what are you testing me for? <laughs> no, <laughs> it's just like you made you made like you made this up. Biology, yeah. mathematics. I'm like, okay, this is <laughs> the no. college. That somebody sat there and was like, hey, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna make them add up letters. I was like, oh. I'm no, I, I'm 100 on that. It don't make sense <laughs> after a while. They go, "What are we doing here? <laughs> what are we?" Doing? And it'd be the longest classes, the longest classes. Yeah, with lab and everything. Yeah, that's when it's like I don't know what we're doing this for. Yeah, and making us better doctors either. So it, this is true. So I, I quickly uh, changed fields once <laughs> I saw that, More. and I was like, uh, I don't. Mm-mm. So I'm in education um, right now. I'm slowly, slowly but surely venturing into my BA, which is in sociology. Mm. I really want to get into that realm of work. But education and sociology together. That's very new. Yes, yes, yes. All right, question number six. What are some common misconceptions about male, I should just say male nurses, not male RNs, but male nurses? Um, I think that people think that male nurses and female nurses are the same. And I think we are generally different, actually, generally different. Really? Yeah. I think it's a different approach, but men and nurse, men and female nurses are def- definitely different. Shout out to all the female nurses. They're very, <laughs> uh, organized. And all the time. <laughs> so that is, yeah, 
Okay, so say more. Like, what do you I mean? I think men are actually more compassionate throwing that out there on the floor. Really? Yeah. I think men, male nurses are more compassionate. Female nurses are, are more structured and orderly and it helps the environment. Really? I was, again, mind blown. I wasn't expecting... How so? Are you just saying that because you're a male nurse? No, I feel, no, like, I don't know, man. The male nurses are very, not, like, they're so, I guess you would have to, if you ever, like, if someone's in the hospital or anything, like, male nurses are really, like, they make you feel really at ease. Not really? judging. Nothing. A lot of, very caring. Very, very caring. And that's weird because um, I would think that it would be the total opposite, right? Because of like women with the like mommy mentality or, you yeah. know, like being very nurturing, very, but I could also see that, that structure aspect of things. Like you got to take your medication here. You got to do this. You got to do that. Yeah. And then you guys coming in like, Hey, how you feeling? <laughs> you know? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's, that's real. <laughs> I mean, I guess this is why you guys are both needed. Um, this is why moms and dads are needed, right? Exactly. It's a different <laughs> approach. Both are needed. Oh my gosh. I really, I wasn't, that makes sense though. Look at you bringing perspective here. Hey, I, I, didn't, I didn't think you were going to say that. I thought you were going to say something else. Like the common misconception is that men don't do nothing on the floor. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't no. Um, nurses, all nurses doing something. That's, that's a hard job. Okay. I think depending on where you are and your interactions with the nurse, you see them more than you see the doctor. Yeah. The doctors come in, the nurse hand them the information that they have, and they're like, ah, you have gas. $3,000. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know I guess that's... very well. Yes. Oh, no, I do. I... Even though I shied away from it, I still like try to keep myself, you know, because I don't want to be that person in the hospital if I have a loved one in the hospital that I didn't know what was going on. Going on? Um, so I'm the one asking questions about medication and, you know, IVs and all this other stuff. Um, so, yeah, I do know that. I, I caught that off the back. That's why I was like, ah, I want to be a doctor until yeah. I saw the math. I'm like, go to school all the time to come in and tell somebody like, ah. You have a That's headache. It is. <laughs> right. And I'm meanwhile, right the nurses right. are taking vitals. They're doing all of this yeah. stuff. Running. Oh, um, at once. Oh, God bless you guys. Okay. Um, so what would you say? This is a tag on question. This is not question number seven. Would you say the ratio of male to women nurses? Like, what would you say that ratio is? I think I know the answer. I think, I think, I mean, I, I think nurse, male nurses make up less than 1% of the population. I think. So I think I might be wrong, but I think it's about, yeah, so one of every 100. Wow. Or I less. mean, that, that is, that is to be expected. And yeah. again, that just goes to, um, who was I talking to? A social worker um, who we have an episode with. He talks about like even how scarce men are in that field. I feel the same way about education. There, there's probably more male educators now, um, but the field is still very scarce. So I, I believe that ratio. That that's very accurate. Yeah, it's 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 kind of problematic because, like you said before, with like with parenting, you definitely need two because you it's two different perspectives, but and they both matter. Mm -hmm. They both matter. Mm -hmm. And what do you? Why do you think? Um, men are not again a tag along question oh man uh, I don't your think perspective it doesn't have it's, this is not you know book information your not, own perspective men aren't going to school they're just not going to school so if you're not in school you're not going to get certain jobs wow. and that's causing a trifecta of issues wow that's deep. Yeah. <laughs> that got yeah. deep real fast. <laughs> yeah, it's not even like, I don't even think it's a racial thing. I yeah. think in general, I'm not going to school. Because most of the doctors that I know, like the nurses, 
the old the occupational therapists, physical therapists, they're they're women. It's just it's a lot of women. And, and I see the total opposite. A lot of doctors I see are men, and a lot of nurses I see are women, but a lot of the doctors I know are men. Yeah, that's but they're yeah. older. They're so yeah, and they're, they're also, older. I, yeah, yeah, I should have, yeah, I should have been more um uh precise. The new graduating classes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So a lot of females and there's no males. There's no males. It's graduating. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know what the, I don't know why though. I I mean, it could be a, a variation of things, right? Like a lot of men jump right into jobs. Yeah. Right. So that balance of doing both. It's very rare that I seen a lot of like of my male counterparts while I was in school. If they were in school, they were in school and they yeah. had people like, you know, taking care of them, or whatever. I was like full time student, full time employee exactly. working. Um, so I guess like if you're making money and the money looks good to you, it's like, OK, what do I need school well, for? I mean, yeah. But, you know, I think just being an entrepreneur is dope. Uh, that's something that I strive that I want to do. But certain things need structure and that requires standards and those standards require schooling. It does. And you gain information, right? Like even if you're not going for like a full on degree, like there's so many certifications, there's so many, like there's so many things that you can do just to be like, ah, I want to know about this thing. If I could get like an ongoing scholarship for my inquisitiveness, Oh. It would be great. Yeah. I I would be like just in school just because, just but win. also the funding <laughs> because gra- graduate level, that they're not be- giving you no scholarships. They don't yeah, want to hear it. <laughs> that's really the problem. This, this, that's also a problem. That's all. Oh, it's getting deep. <laughs> what question is this? <laughs> it's, not, it's not. It's not a question. It's not a question. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, is it worth trying to learn and then you can't get a job, but then you owe seventy, eighty thousand dollars? That is that is a thing. <laughs> that is yeah. and that is a question of life because it's like, okay, I go to school, I get this thing, right? Hopefully I get the job of my dreams once I finish, but then I'm paying off schooling until the rest of my life. <laughs> Yeah, literally. Like the whole rest of my life. Um, and they aren't graduate. They're not. They may be giving a few more scholarships now because of like everything with 2020 and yeah. wanting people to enroll. But even then, they're not giving it to you out the back. Like you have to already be enrolled in their program. Oh, because I looked. Because um, yeah. I was like, I'm taking advantage of all of the free things. Um, <laughs> That's um, a nice but they're like, no, you have to be enrolled in school already. And then we put you in a lottery for the scholarship and then maybe you'll get it. It's like, That's too much of a gamble because the death's still there. It is. Yeah. It is. I can't go by your maybe, ma'am. I'm sorry. I'm pretty sure you're a pretty honest person, but <laughs> I can't. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. We're getting too deep, Garfield. I'm, so, we're getting I'm, too sorry, deep. I'm sorry. Oh, this is not a sad episode. <laughs> you can do whatever you want to do. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. You already answered question number seven. What is the difference between male nurses? And I don't even think you did that on purpose. Male nurses and female nurses. Garfield said that male nurses are more caring I said than it. female nurses. Okay. I'm, his at handle is going to be <laughs> somewhere in this corner. If you have any rebuttal for him, you DM him directly. Do not message me because he said it. He said the difference is male nurses are more caring. Female nurses are more compassionate, uh, um, what's that called? Structured, and it's very needed. He's, try- he's trying to brush it over uh, by making us feel better. Uh, but any <laughs> female that is out there, he is basically saying you are not caring enough. I did, I did not say that. I didn't say that. That is that is basically what he said. That is basically how he said it. His words, go back. I'm going to put the timestamp. I'm going to plug it in at the moment you said it right here so they can that go back. That sounds so bad. <laughs> exactly. 
I didn't, it didn't mean to come out that way. <laughs> no, no. He's saying that both are needed. Uh, that basically me- female nurses are the disciplinarians and male <laughs> nurses are the one that's like, come here, let me give you a lollipop. That's what he's saying. Yeah, actually, that, that sounds about right. <laughs> <laughs> We're like, chill, yo, let's chill. Like it's, it's okay. They're going to be all right. It's okay. okay. It's all right. Mm. I don't yeah. know if that's a good thing. But anyway, that's what he says. So question number seven. Really good thing. <laughs> question number seven. The difference is, basically, he didn't say that the male nurses were better. So that's also, you know. Oh, they're not. <laughs> yeah, they're not. They're not better. You need structure. Yeah. So, ba- okay. So let's, I'm a, male nurses are caring without structure. There we go. Yeah, a lot of yeah, a lot of not structured. A lot of not structured. And that includes him. <laughs> oh, 100 percent One hundred percent I'm trying to get it together. Uh, this is why he's now his older age taking his time and not going on you a whim. It? There we mm-hmm. go. Okay. <laughs> what is your area of focus? Question number eight. What is your area of focus as a nurse? So I know we talked off camera about something that you are venturing into now, but I guess you could take us on your journey of areas of focus even up until this point. So what I did before then up until now? Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I did kind of a little bit of everything. I did rehab, med surge, step down, cardiothoracic ICU. Yeah, he's and- just throwing all these terms out there like, and I'm oh. like, huh, yeah, oh, I know. Right. Um, I know, step down. I go down the stairs all the time. <laughs> um, I guess that's hard to explain. It's like med surge is um, people that had surgery. Okay. Medical diagnosis, like the flu or something, maybe even COVID. Okay. And then step down is more like you have to be monitored more than, okay. you know, you might need to be vital signs every four hours or something like that. More IVs, more antibiotics. And then the cardiothoracic ICU is, you had surgery, so you're coming straight to us. So then we're really monitoring you every hour. And you said, say it again, cardio? Cardiothoracic ICU. Cardio, so that, break down the words. I learned that in school. Cardio is what? The heart. Yes. And then what's the other word? Thoracic. So that's right here, thoracic cavity. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then the intensive care unit for ICU. Ooh, look yeah. at us learning words. Okay. Yeah, I, I forgot. See, abbreviations are not good. I can't keep saying those because not everyone. <laughs> I'm still learning. Don't worry. I'm inquisitive enough. I will ask. I am yeah. not embarrassed. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. No, you're fine. Don't apologize. Okay, so you did that. And then current day. You now are. I'm, a, I'm a case manager, so I kind of call people and I talk to them about health. It's kind of more where I want to gauge my life anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which I did not know. So did that require a new certification or degree, or is it just like? Um, you can get certified, but what helped me kind of get this job or in this realm is I got certified in health coaching which is kind of more in the realm of, you know, uh, training, training, talking about food, mm. talking about, yeah, and movement. I kind of, and then that's kind of helped me get this, you know, this going. It's more preventative. Mm. That's interesting. I didn't know, because when I think of like case manager, I think of like stuff that I want to do. So like, you know, sociology field. Mm-hmm. Um, counselors, like people like that, like normally do like case managing and stuff like that. So I never would have thought like someone who was an RN, like being the case manager. A that lot, makes sense. yeah. A lot of case managers are nurses, actually. Which makes sense, especially in the medical field, because why would yeah. you need me to come and be? <laughs> <laughs> but social workers, I actually social workers too. Um, that's very needed because they know like certain resources that nurses may not know. Yeah. But the health part, we don't. The health part is when you do nurse work. Yeah, I would be lying to them. Like, all right, drink orange juice. and (laughs) Maybe. Room room temperature ginger ale. This is what we need. And water, and water, and water. Always no water. (laughs) And your multivitamins. 
There we go. Honestly, that's good. That could save a life right there. Okay. Somebody hired me. I'm here. I'm ready. <laughs> oh, I'd be able to get hired for real. Oh my gosh. I would not do that. I would feel so bad. That would not be it. Okay. Um, I have a tagline question. Yeah. I'm here. I'm trying to think. I forgot. I started laughing too hard. Um, oh, so what are your hours like now? From I work, before. Yeah, I work, so I went from working 13, 14 hours, three days a week to nine to five. Yeah. Okay. So now he's going to soon have to change his name on Instagram yeah. to moderate nurse, moderate yeah. sleepy nurse. I'm not sleepy. <laughs> I'm, not I'm, sleepy. Not sleepy nurse. I'm not sleepy nurse. I'm not sleepy. Okay. Question number nine. What is something that is a struggle for you as a nurse, other than sleep? Because that is a, you know, that obviously was a struggle. But what is something else that is a struggle for you as a nurse? Um, balance of life. It's very abstract. Um, I think that when you uh, care for people often, you, you get fatigued, you get tired because you not really uh, have time to reflect for yourself. So getting that balance of taking care of yourself and taking care of others. Which is true, because like, who nurses the nurse, right? Who nurses the nurse? Who doctors the doctor, teaches the teacher. It's an ongoing cycle. That that was a very clever way and insightful way of saying that. That's, ooh, I might be taking that. That was, that was good. (laughs) Who nurses the nurse? Just. Tag me in it. I, I am all for my credit because I will come no. underneath your post like, you didn't say this. Oh, this no. Was, it's like, no. no. That's, that's really real. Who nurses the nurse? Yeah, no, we don't think about it. I, I for a short while, did a massage therapy. Um, again, just me being inquisitive and wanting to get all of the degrees and certifications. Um, but that was one of the things, like, outside of the information that you learned, um, they would always say, as a massage therapist, you have to get massaged at least once. Mainly, they recommend twice a month. I honestly think that the healthcare field is missing that. That is, because that is amazing. Like, that's the type of Eastern practice that's like, we need to put that in Western. Yeah, they they were really, now... (laughs) They didn't really set up shop for you to get it done. Like that was just. <laughs> it was just telling you. <laughs> yeah. Um, so like in school, of course, you would get, you know, when you're practicing on each other, really slightly. But once you start clinicals and you're like doing other patients, depending on where you're stationed, I was in a rehab facility. So we have patients coming all the time, you know, um, yeah. and then you kind of forget, but you feel it because you are working super hard. And then it's like, ah. I need to go get a massage. But yes, I do believe even just like mental health, jobs don't really take those things into account. You take a day off, they want to know why. Yeah. Somebody better be dying because it's like, I just need to sleep. We need you. Yeah. Right. Like it's, no, no, no. We have the, to. With the massage therapy, um, do you feel that you started to feel like real tension from your, in your body and as well as others? Yes. yes. This is why I stopped. Other than me hurting my wrist at bowling. Oh, um, wow. I had to go on a hiatus. Um, and then once I did that, I was like, ah, I'm going to go back to school while I heal. I don't know who does that, but um, <laughs> I did. I was just like, I'm just sitting here. I can't do this. Um, but yeah, I did. So you can feel things in people's body, but also like I felt like, oh man, my clavicle, this is something wrong. Like I, I got into an accident and I was able to tell the doctor like right here in the middle of my clavicle is like not broken, but it's probably like really, really, and they did the x-ray. He was like, oh, you know your stuff. Like, wow. You yeah. Can feel it. yeah. Yeah. You could, you, you learn when you're learning the body, you can, but massaging people, your arms, your hands, like you develop, like my hands used to, up so bad like I mean like lock my fingers were locked 
because I wasn't doing my stretches that I was supposed to do um, throughout the day. So my fingers started locking and I'm like, <laughs> scariest thing ever. It used to happen a lot. That's really good information to know. Yeah. Yeah. So when you are going to go get a massage, make sure you remind those people as a, as a nurse, be like, I'm a professional. Make sure yeah. you are you are stretching and doing what you need to do. That's Thank you for the massage. <laughs> that's really that's real information because stretching just releases tension anywhere. So and I'm horrible at it now. You think I would? Mm -mm. I'm horrible. We're supposed to stretch every day. All of us. Right just because. <laughs> exactly. I haven't done it. <laughs> Went to the gym. Didn't stretch at all. No. And and especially if you're working out. Yeah. It just it's just it's I don't know. It's slow, and I want to get it going. Just gotta slow down. There we go. Slow yeah. it down. Ah, uh, okay. The question we've all been waiting for. <laughs> question number 10. Where did the name sleepiness come from? Um, it came from always being tired. <laughs> it really did. And my friends started to call me a sleepy nurse. That's really where it came from. And you just uh, adopted it. <laughs> yeah, I, when I started to um, acknowledge that I have an issue, that's I was like, you know what? I'm going to keep sleepy nurse to remember what I don't want to be anymore. Mm. Yeah, so not that I'm sleepy now. It's more that I, that's what I was. And I'm trying to get out of it. It's like playing on words. Wow. Like using it to fuel not going back. Exactly. To that. Yeah. Cause it's really a lot of, I'm not, like I said, I'm not a, you know, nurses know we're not the healthiest people. We're tired. And then what we do on our time off usually isn't the healthiest thing for us. And we just go back to the grind and that's not something I want to live by. No. Especially now wanting to venture into the health side of things. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can be like an advocate for like nurses health and being able to promote that really for people um, to just be better at, you know, that's kind of what I life. <laughs> Kind of what I want. I really want to do, but I realize that there's a lot of healing that I do for myself. I'm healing myself because I like, like I was saying before, I've been, I was a nurse's aide at 19, and they took me to around 27 to realize this is not going in a good direction with my my own health. So it's been about three years of me just trying to heal myself. It's, it's taken time. Wow, and that's important. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, listen to what he just said. Before he goes out there and give information, he wants to heal himself. It is okay to do that. Okay? Don't try to be on the battlefield trying to give people directions. <laughs> like, Word. Like, <laughs> like, win the war first. Like, uh, make sure the bullets aren't flying. And then, yeah, like, this is combat. This is how we're going to do this. Don't try to do it on the battlefield. Like, Win the war first, and then then go about your life. <laughs> you got a lot of ways of saying things. It's so amazing. Oh, look at that! Yeah, look at, yeah that was that was that was a really good analogy. Again, I swear, I'm like, yo, man, that's, real. <laughs> that's because that's the way I learn. That is that is how I interpret things when people speak to me. I'm like, so what you're saying is, I've always been that student. Yeah. So that's just kind of how I teach. Also, that's how you learn. Yeah. Fast. Yes. All right. So we have the story behind Sleepy Nurse. Now tell us about your podcast. Question number 11. Tell us about your podcast. Uh, so my podcast is kind of like a, me and my brother, the Captain Morgan, where he's a physician assistant. I think I brought it up earlier. And we're kind of really going on our journey of, you know, being Black males and, you know, in the profession, in society and you know, going back to the basics of things and why it relates to where we are now and where we're headed. Hmm. So what is the name of it? And like, what, in, what inspired you guys to just be like, oh, we're going to start a podcast? Uh, so I, I, I personally came up with the name, uh, The Basics. Cause I like to always get to the basics of things. Just how you're talking about like the clarification. Mm -hmm. so that's how I like to learn too. Like, so what you're telling me is this, mm -hmm. like, this is a virus. What does a virus do? 
how can they do this to me? So right. I like to get to the basics of most things. And me being uh, like changing my own lifestyle, I did realize a lot of the issues, especially within the Black and Hispanic community is a lack of health literacy and financial literacy. And they're, they're like two sides of a coin, mm. you know? So then it's like getting to the basics of everything is probably how we're gonna heal ourselves. That's my philosophy, at least. No, I, I, I agree. Like if you can, it's almost like, um, like if you, like if a house structure is like doing whatever up top, right? They're gonna go to the foundation of it. Like if something is swaying, they're gonna go to the foundation of it to see, okay, how is this foundation built? What did they use? What did they do or whatever? And then they'll be able to make the proper, you know, speculations yeah. or whatever on why this house is creaking. Why does it sway when it's 60 mile an hour winds or whatever? Um, it shouldn't be doing that. Um, so yeah, I totally agree. If we can understand where the lack is, um, we can definitely help ourselves to become better and that we can stop the cycles because that's what it is also, that they're reoccurring cycles of like things that happen. It's like, oh, if I would have caught this before, I wouldn't be at this place again because it's probably a different time zone, probably a different location, but it is the same thing I'm it's doing. Coming, it's looking different, but it's the yeah. same, the same <laughs> issue over and over. Over and over and over again. Um, so the basics, um, I will have the link in the description box so you can go back and check out the episodes and listen to these amazing Black males give their perspective and insight on all overall health of people in poor demographics they eat less healthy and since they're eating less healthy they're less likely to be working out and doing the things they need to do to stay healthy yeah we're, they're working more hours mm -hmm. and they because poor people do work working more hours not getting a lot of money increased stress yeah increased stress and um, improper diet your immune system probably already weakened from a few of these things and then COVID 19 came around and it will wreck you yeah and it has wrecked many people it's 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 wrecking <laughs> what that sounds so inappropriate it's just wrecking us dude i mean <laughs> we're getting hit hard we're with this america hard, bro. <laughs> america we got to do better we're getting wrecked yeah we're, we're not even allowed in certain Always countries at this point knows. one day i may be on their podcast 100%. um once i'm on there i will announce that i have made it um that my booking fees have gone up <laughs> <laughs> Price gone up. Right. Price is, you know, um, I'm at high demand now. The basics have me on their podcast. Um, and that is it. Um, <laughs> but check out the link in the description. Um, okay. Question number 12. Do you often get confused for a doctor? Yes. People think it's the same thing. Like, oh, you're a doctor. I'm like, no, I'm not. Like, I'm not a doctor. And I, I respect doctors because they um they go to school for about 13 to 15 years. Not that. People think and we um we don't know the same things. Doctors are really medicine based. Mm -hmm. you know, that's what they, they're very good at that. So they people usually confuse the two. Sometimes even nurses confuse the two, to be honest with you. And like we're not doctors. And I respect doctors, we're not them at all. And I wonder, this is just me. I'm not saying that this is a thing, but even to um, my followers, shout out to the person who asked this question. Uh, we ended up getting into a dialogue and because I realized that when I did the interview with an LPN, no one asked that question. So I asked uh. the young lady who asked this, I said, I wonder, do you, are you asking this question because he is a male nurse? And she said, yeah that I feel like males in that profession, people oftentimes just feel like the males are the doctors. Not that there aren't female doctors, because I know amazing, amazing female doctors. Um, but she was like, I believe that people just automatically may assume that he is a doctor because he is a male. Yeah, it, it, oh man, should I get, oh, man. Go ahead, tell all the um, things we want to know. So I feel like, that's two things, really. That's really an inferiority complex, mm -hmm. saying that men cannot be what women are and women cannot be what men are. 
Mm-hmm. We all know that's not entirely true. Right. Black women in particular are dominating, entrepreneur and in school. Yes. And then also that really just causes problems just with, I guess, even men saying that they can't be what, what women are, which could be compassionate, what people think, nurses and cleaning the house. Like that can cause mm-hmm. so many issues even thinking that way. It really could. Yeah, I mean, that's a, I could really go into depth in that because that's a really, I think that's a thing that kind of hurts us indirectly thinking like that. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, of course you're not going to go, hey, did you, did you think I was a doctor because I'm a man? But I'm yeah. pretty sure if someone was bold enough to ask that, that most of the people would say, oh yeah, you know, yeah. like. Yeah, hmm. I love being a nurse. I, I think I love what nurses stand for. And I love what, what doctors stand for too, but the the bedside, the compassion, you know, that's the holistic aspect of, of healthcare is really a nurse. No offense to doctors either. No <laughs> right, offense. right. But like you said, there is a, a difference, right? I mean, I joked earlier, uh, but that's typically, you see a nurse all the time and then a doctor comes in and does just be like, okay, oh, yeah. that's it. And then I'll be back. And then- you know, you see the nurse for the rest of the time, but it is different schooling. Um, I've met doctors that could literally just by like looking at you say like, okay, are you experiencing this symptom? Are you experiencing, like I went to a, um, was he a gastrologist? Amazing man. Oh gosh. I loved him so much. I just, I was like, I want you to be in my family. He was like a short Indian man. He was so cute, but yeah. he was so, so knowledgeable like literally he was like um you know this thing may be going on in your small intestines and if it is i can almost guarantee you that you're tired that you're this that you're that and i'm looking at him like oh you know me so well right <laughs> like he just was like reading me like as we would say like he was literally i'm like oh my god so what do i do to get better like yeah. <laughs> he yeah. had me like i was completely so he but not only did he like give all of these diagnoses, but he encouraged me to like go and research and look up stuff and That's amazing. figure out things. And I was like, oh, this man is great. He is my uncle now. Like, you know, I, I want to. <laughs> I love doctors that are like that. They're the more newer school approach. I love yes. that. Yes, yes. And he was older. He's like an older guy. And then he had like a um, a student doctor, that's what you call him? Yeah, a student doctor with him. He was like younger. You could say he was like really nervous but he also was full of knowledge and information and he was helping him develop an app. And it was like, so it, it was just, it was a lot in that one visit. I was like, I did not come here for this, but thank you. I appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I think that is a common misconception. And I do believe that it is because you are a man, unfortunately. And like you said, that the idea that men can't be nurses. Um, I don't know if we experienced the same thing in the education field. Because it's almost like if you're in the building, you are most likely a teacher, you know? Yeah. Um, mm. If you, in teachers, we have a look. Like there is just an educator's look. Like you either got glasses on or, you know, you're just yeah. like really spunky or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So I don't think we, that would be a good question. When I interview a teacher, I'm going to ask them that. Like, do you get mistaken for the principal? I don't know. Like, I don't know what the other, alternate would be and i mean for nurses and the first nurse wasn't female um like or the who's more prominent like florence nightingale and then for males they did in the early 1800s and 1900 it was all men so that does have a at one point women could not be doctors women blacks and jewish people that's a that's a like a fact. doctors not nurses doctors in the like in the 1800s you you had to be a white male so there there is like a history to it i'm not sure how yeah. teachers were though like did, were teachers first men or were teachers more uh women? i don't know that would be something good to look up i will i love that type of stuff that's how my brain works like how, yeah what was the bait like how did it start and then i could really know like oh okay that's where that came from yeah <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're going so this this episode is not going the way that I thought. It's like, no, I'm just playing. 
<laughs> Question number 13 for you, not for me. I'm, I'm, not, I'm done talking at this point. Uh, what did 2020 look like for you and your career? So you could speak from personal and from a career perspective. Honestly, it really um, changed. It was like a catalyst because it, it really, those are issues that I saw that was forthcoming with technology, the way we're not being preventative, and when it just came and like everything just came at us, it was like, it's really now or never. Like we really have to really reinvent yourself. Like you have to. It's not even a it's not even an option anymore. So that that sums up from what even what you said. Like that's I think yeah, you said it. Like that kind of really as a person, that's what you sh- that's what the answer should be, for me at least. Like that's you gotta change. Yeah. Did you um I know you said you transitioned from bedside like three years ago. So you yeah. weren't like interacting with any patients with COVID or anything like that. Yeah, my job was already transitioning into working from home. So when mm. this happened, it, I was, it was very accessible for me to work from home. It was nothing, it didn't skip a beat at all. Wow. Yeah, that, yeah, that this job was, they're, they're already, I guess, thinking ahead because a lot of, um, a lot of countries are already thinking of how of how to reduce certain things and what even what we're doing right now like like this is this is the future yeah wow that's interesting so it it didn't really impact you like there wasn't no drastic like get out the building <laughs> no the virus yeah that's how it was for us um <laughs> yeah that day was we need, so interesting we need a whole separate i would really want to hear everything you have oh man yeah it was it was a doozy to say the least (laughs) it wasn't like it was like the beginning of the like it's when we were nowhere it's almost about to be a year yeah in march that that is so i mean even though it started technically a little bit before that but i it will be a year towards the middle of march since i've been teaching from home yeah that i was yeah, we could talk about that because I was like, <laughs> should you have continued school? Should we just like should have ended school from March to June and just start back we up? We will like, not talk about that on here. You will not have me flagged. <laughs> that, that's some of the things I'm like, yo, this, yeah, you're right. But that's Garfo is making this whole interview about me. I did not <laughs> is this asking 15 questions to Don Gate or to Garfo? That's what I'm trying to figure out. People <laughs> put it in the comment section. What do you think? Do you think this was <laughs> I asked him about his career in 2020. He asked me about mine. I'm confused. I guess that's what happens when you get a podcast on your show. <laughs> oh man! But no, that that's interesting though to to even hear from your perspective of saying that you guys had already transitioned. And me, I'm kind of like, did y'all know that y'all didn't tell them because <laughs> I, I was looking at. Let me tell you nurses all my nurses friends all my doctors that i knew i was reaching out to them like did y'all know something i ain't say nothing to me did you know because i'm gonna be very upset (laughs) honestly honestly, as a nurse i saw people um people like coughing and then all of a sudden they couldn't the doctors couldn't stop it and then they just like died they were like oh that's weird that did happen like in january of last yeah yeah, because they were saying like anybody, because <laughs> this is so crazy. In my building, I remember there was like an influx of people getting the flu in like November, December, right? Yeah. But it's the flu, right? So everybody, you know, was taking days off. I'm like, well, y'all stay away. Like, I don't, I ain't never got a flu. Y'all ain't about to get me sick. And then when everything like kind of like skyrocketed, they was like, oh, if you most likely, if anybody got sick in November, December, you guys had COVID. And I was like, yeah. So we had the vid in the building. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody knew. It wasn't and the, but so I have so many medical questions because it's like, if this was a thing, right? What really skyrocketed the deaths once everybody put a name to it? Yeah. Because I didn't have no teachers that died. If you're saying that they had it. Yeah. You know, I mean, I have my own theories, but I am not a doctor, so I will not yeah. say the things. 
you know. Um, but I was just, that was very interesting to me because I'm like, okay, mostly majority of our staff ended up getting the flu um, in like November, December. There were yeah. so many people that were out. And it's like, okay, if you're saying that that could have been COVID, these people are yet alive. Yeah. <laughs> they are still that, here. Oh, that's true. Yeah. In January, when people were getting sick, that, I mean, that person died, but um, it wasn't like that. I wouldn't think of- so, yeah, I remember like in January that some people were dying, but um, you really didn't know. It wasn't that many people, though, to really make right. it think like it was something going on. It's just like odd occurrences. So I'm not sure. Yeah. So that's like, that's like been one of my, I think, most lingering medical questions. Um, like I said, I think fear plays a lot of, of factors in a lot of things. Um, I do believe that when fear is, and I do, social media did a, a doozy. <laughs> this is my word of the day. Yeah. Of forefronting the fear factor of COVID. So I do believe that for a lot of people that heightened a lot of things, not saying that, you know, that's not me taking away from the severity of the virus at all. Um, I just do believe that the, if, if it would have been handled better from a media perspective, yeah, I believe a lot more people would have survived it. I think fear. There was, there was a lot of opinions too early. Yes, yes, yes. So many of them. I'm going to send you on uh, Instagram this video that this uh, girl did of like what press conferences about COVID sound like. And I'm like, this is the funniest, most accurate um, yeah, definitely. Video I've seen because she was just like saying things like, you know, stand six feet away, but maybe not stand six feet away, maybe further away. It was just like all of these things in the oh, beginning. Yeah. It was like so much guessing. Don't wear a mask. <laughs> wear a mask. Uh, don't it it can't stay on surfaces. Spray your surfaces down because it sits on there. I was just like, oh. it really was crazy. It was too much. It <laughs> was, was like, too much. My was- brain is hurting, please. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um yeah. all right. Since you are now, which I didn't know before this question rose, a case manager. Um, what are question number 14? What are some health tips you can give? I, I have on here can get to us. Uh, <laughs> um, ooh, um, and don't you, say drink water. We no, know. no. I'm going to say, no, this one's good because I noticed it a lot um, this year. People that have asthma, because like a lot of issues happen with asthma, to know which medication you should be taking outside. Because a lot of people are taking the wrong one. They're taking like their long-term medication at like outside as opposed to the short-term one. So like make sure you know the difference between those two asthma because you don't want to have an asthma attack and you have the wrong medication on you. Wow. It happens like way more than I thought. And another one is to check your blood pressure if you have blood pressure medication you don't know if it's working or not. That's what I see very, very often as a case manager. Wow. Two things I had no. <laughs> Again, but people don't ask questions, right? We put, and I'm, I'm people, I'm not telling y'all not to trust your doctors. That's not what I'm saying. But I do believe that you need to do your own research. A doctor give you a medication, don't be like, all right, doc, I'm going to I'm good. <laughs> like, I'll see you in two years. But what? No. Because what are the side effects of those medications? Uh, yeah, like, and sometimes, like, and that kind of, like, piggybacks on what you're saying. Like, if you weren't used to taking one, now I have to get used to taking seven. That There's just so much room for failure. <sighs> okay, any other health tips you have for us? <laughs> I'm like- um, so either checking, asking the questions. Um, those ones I see a lot, and... Doctors don't bring it up enough, but always monitor how, how you're, what you're eating and looking at labels and really seeing what's in those ingredients because that's what's causing a lot of these issues. That's probably the biggest tip. Mm. What so what are, what are things we, when we see on the label, we should just put it back on the counter? <laughs> um, if there's a hundred things in the ingredients, I don't, I wouldn't take it. 
sometimes they'd be like so many things. If it's like less than more than like seven ingredients, I usually don't even eat it myself. More than seven? Yeah, I like my food very, very natural. <laughs> and if, I'm, try, I'm looking around like, where do, what food do I have by me so I can see? Yeah. And if the first ingredient is high fructose corn syrup, don't take that. If the first ingredient, that's not good. Wait, my chips is not good? Wait. If the first ingredient is high fructose corn syrup, most likely not. No, it's corn. Corn? Corn starch? No, just corn. All right, cool. It's actually only three. Wow, you don't never really think about that. That's what I look at. Like, I look at how many ingredients are in there. Oh, my God. Certain things now have I'm like, trying to see what else food I got. <laughs> Certain things have, like, 17. I'm like, what's in this to make this? Wow. Mm. No, I mean, these are corn chips, so they're pretty... Oh, yeah. I mean, the salt in it, obviously. <laughs> but it's corn, vegetable oil, and salt. That's it. That's good. That's three things. So I'm like, okay, now I know what I'm taking. And that's it. And then just, so if it's you know, more than seven... For me, I don't, I try to know, know what I'm eating. Okay. For all of us who are not Garfield, what number is okay? <laughs> <laughs> if you, if, if you don't understand what it is, if it starts saying things like, you know, some chemicals and you don't know what it is, it's probably not good for you. So people, if, <laughs> if you don't understand. In a, in a nutshell, if you start reading and then you go, uh, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> don't eat it. That's basically that's that's the rule of thumb I, I live by. Oh my god! See that don't work that don't work for me because I'm going to sound it out. I'm going to, <laughs> um, especially if it's something I want. It, throw it back. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know we don't think about it because when we're in the supermarket, you're just like you know like yeah. throwing stuff in the cart. Like you're not really thinking about it. Oh man. So why did you do that? Now, now shopping yeah. is gonna be longer for me. It, it it might be longer, but it might be better, you know. But yeah, I mean, that's how I do it. He says seven. Jeez, <laughs> somebody is gonna have to throw with a whole refrigerator. <laughs> that happens. It can happen. It can happen. So, okay, be honest. Okay, we're gonna go to the last question and the bonus. But have you always, or do you always eat like that? So what happens when you go to a restaurant? Uh, I eat pretty clean. I eat very, I eat very, very clean. Very, very, very clean. So what is clean? Clean is like, it's pretty natural. Like it's chicken breast, turkey breast, vegetables. So you don't eat fast food? I haven't eaten fast food. I haven't eaten like McDonald's, Taco Bell, probably since like 2014 or so. Docking, it's docking, yeah. About 2014, yeah. Maybe 2015. And you just was like, ah, I don't want to eat it no more? Yeah, yeah, it was making me sleepy. That was part of the stuff, too. I was like, oh, I had a bad shift. This is true. I'm going to go to Taco Bell. <laughs> or time to go ice like Taco Bell and no, I'm White Castle, particularly. I don't eat meat, but you enjoy French fry. <sighs> the French fry? Oh man, that thing is amazing. McDon- I think McDonald's French fries are phenomenal. It's just not McDonald's French fry. It is just the French fry <laughs> from all the places. I love. Oh man, I love. The- I should be. If a I was good- a nurse, I would be French fry nurse. That's how bad. It is. A, a good French fry could take you a long way. Like it's a good French fry. I'm with you with that. It's a starch, you know. Like a full meal. The oil, you got your fats in there. <laughs> I don't I, I don't approve of that, but yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to taste good. <laughs> it got the potato. That feels like I didn't say I didn't say that. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> oh man, no. Seven things. Yeah, a lot of things have too many ingredients for me that I don't understand, which means my body most likely don't understand it either. That you talking about me? That makes sense. This is we, if my mind can't understand it, my body probably doesn't either. Yeah. Oh, my poor body. Oh man. <laughs> <sighs> oh, okay. <laughs> Sad tips from Garfield. <laughs> you got another tip? Like, ah, oh, so 
So now it's all. I should have just stopped. I should have just stopped. I should have <laughs> left with the two. I'm going to edit it out. Edit that part out. So funny. Uh, no, okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Last question. Last question. And then we're going to do our bonus. Okay. What advice would you give to someone looking to become an RN? The advice that I will give a future RN. Um, keep pushing. Um, I feel like a lot of people really give up to like right before it gets hard or like that obstacle. And that's usually where the the lesson is. Like, don't give up. I would say that to make a test could be hard, just come back. If you fail, do it again. There it is. Don't give up. Okay. Yeah, that's that's yeah, that's that's my advice for nurses. Yes, don't give up. Don't give up. And it it is a journey. Again, I am not a nurse, but I know a lot of people who went into the field. And I remember like being in college, you knew who all the nursing majors were because yeah. they all were sleepy. <laughs> oh, it's a common thing. They were always sleepy or they always had junk food. <laughs> Yo, it's real. They will be headed to the library with their junk food. <laughs> junk food is real. Yeah. All right. Are you ready for this ready. bonus round? Okay. We are going to do a round of this or that. I am going to give you two options. Okay. And you have to pick one. Not you cannot one. ask questions like, okay, well, what if it's on a Wednesday or no, yeah. no, 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 no. Okay. Just pick one. I actually want to add one because I heard you say something. So I'm going to add one here. Fair deal. Uh, Oh my God, what is that other thing called? Oh, oh. I can't think of it. Oh, come on. Oh my we, God. We, we talked about it already. It's going to come to me. All right. All right. Um, um, I guess we're going to do it like that. All right. All right. Are you ready? Yes. First one RN or doctor? All right. Okay. Curry or roti? Curry. Morning shift or night shift? Night shift. <laughs> night shift really fast. After all of his tiredness, he wants to. I'll still go back night shift. <laughs> okay. Okay. Podcast or vlogging? Vlogging. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. I after his advice, I don't know what he's gonna pick right here, but we'll see. Soda or juice? Juice. I, I'm assuming a hundred percent with three Real ingredients. Juice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> juice is definitely. But what about the soda you make yourself? Oh, like carbonated water and stuff. Yeah. Like you have the carbonated carbonated machine. Yeah, isn't that soda? That's considered soda. Right now. Yeah, I think that's soda. Is that soda? Actually, yeah, I think that's like, yeah, soda water. Yeah, yeah, that's good. I'll still do juice, though. Okay. Like natural, <laughs> All right. Natural orange juice or something like that. It has a lot of sugar. It does. It does. Um, but I still drink it. Um, <laughs> Me too. Here, here's the one. Let's see. Folks, here we go. I, I heard it go off, so I, I think I know his answer is going to be iPhone or Android? iPhone. Let's give him a round of applause for this. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what we were going, but I heard the phone go off. Like, Hi. I heard the yeah, okay. my, yeah, my computer, it keeps going off. Like, it's connected to my phone. So he also has a MacBook. Woo, there we go. Apple. All right. Netflix or Hulu? Netflix. I feel so bad for this next question. McDonald's or White Castle? Oh, White Castle. You don't eat it, but that's just your choice. Yeah, I'm, choosing, I'm choosing White Castle. I mean, they have Impossible Burgers. Which which one has Impossible Burgers? Uh, McDonald's don't. All of their stuff is already Impossible. Um, really? No, I mean it's fake. Um, so wait, I have a real conspiracy on that. I would rather eat meat than Impossible Burger. Really? 
look up the ingredients. I'm, that's my rule. Aww. That's my rule. That's that's the rule I live by. So I was like, yeah, why? What is this? I will not look up the ingredients because don't look I, up. I don't. don't look up. I don't eat meat and I eat impossible everything. I found Beyond Beyond Meat has uh, don't look it up. Don't look it up. Bro, now you said it and I am gonna do it. Okay. Don't look it up. It's yeah. Okay. Um, would you rather read a book or listen to an audible? Audible one hundred percent. I'm an audible person. Okay. Uh <laughs> next one take vitals or take a stool sample vitals <laughs> what <laughs> oh my god yeah. was- the other one just came in my head i was trying to think of the other thing it was supposed to be <laughs> take vitals or install a catheter i couldn't think of what it was called vitals yeah 100 okay. Vital. <laughs> okay last one 15 questions or 15 minutes 15 questions. It's always a trick question. And all of my guests always go, hmm. It's always 15 questions because why wouldn't it be? Okay. 15 questions <laughs> could be more than 15 minutes. Or it less. could be. It could be. So we thank you, Garfield, for um, making us clean out our refrigerators. Oh. Um, <laughs> look up information. Um, all of the things that we just did not expect. And thank you for asking me questions. This, guys, we tricked you. This was Ask 15 Questions to John. Ah. <laughs> I'm, just I'm just playing. But no, you were you were a joy to have. Um, I will be looking forward to that podcast invitation. Listen, yeah. we can talk you about all the things. Oh, that I know. You know, you're going to make me do my research now. I already have a question here. Um, were males the first teachers? I am going to look that up to find out. Yeah. Um but thank you. Thank you. Thank you for enlightening us on this episode. We really appreciate it. Um, on this Ask 15 Questions to Amel RN. Um, and as I tell you guys all the time, oh, before I close, do you have anything else to say? Um, just thank you for having me. It's been a pleasure. Of course. Of course. But as I always say to you guys, make sure you are living in purpose on purpose. Bye. Yeah.